All right, tonight's video, we're going to talk about the reasons for instability. So why is it that a nucleus decays? Why do they emit a beta particle, an alpha particle, do an electron capture? What is it about the configuration inside the nucleus that makes it unstable? And there really, there's three reasons why an element would decay. The first reason is too many protons. So if an element has too many protons, it means there's too much repulsive force, and so it can overcome that nuclear force and just push everything out. And so it'll undergo a certain type of decay. The second reason is if it has too many neutrons. Yeah, neutrons are neutral, so they don't really repel each other, but if you have too many neutrons in a nucleus, it just gets crowded. There's too many people inside of a small room, and so it's going to try and eject something to kind of clear up some space. And in the last reason, there's just too much of both. So if a nucleus gets too large, too big, it's just unstable by nature. So there's too many protons, too many neutrons, it's going to start clearing out some clutter. In a nutshell, what this all boils down to is that elements decay, elements are unstable, because they're trying to achieve the perfect ratio of protons to neutrons. And so they will dump whatever they need to in order to get to that perfect ratio of protons to neutrons inside of their nucleus. So to find that perfect ratio, we actually need a chart that shows what's called the zone of stability. Now you don't need to write this down. If I haven't already, I'll give you a paper copy that you can have. And what this shows is the number of neutrons versus the number of protons. And right here, this band shows the zone of stability. So any element that falls within this zone is by nature stable. So if we look at something like zirconium 9040 would fall right there in the zone of stability. That means it has 40 protons and it has about 50 neutrons and so it's stable. Let's say that there was an atom of zirconium though that had 60 neutrons instead. So if it had 60 neutrons, well with zirconium it would still have the same number of protons but it would fall out there outside of the zone of stability. So that means there's too many neutrons inside of that zirconium and so it's going to undergo decay. It's going to find a way to lose neutrons and so that it can get into the zone of stability. Uh, if an element has too many protons or too few neutrons, it would be down in this area, and so it would do something to get up into the zone of stability. And what you can see is right here, if you look at the beginning of the periodic table, the first you know, 18 elements or so have a one-to-one -one ratio of protons and neutrons. But then at about that point, you start needing more neutrons in order to become stable, and then even more. So the ratio for zirconium is about 1.25 neutrons for every proton. But once we get it to something bigger like bismuth, you need one and a half neutrons roughly for every one proton. And you'll notice that the band of stability ends right here. Okay, that point right there marks where elements just get too big. They become radioactive by nature. So too much stuff inside of the nucleus. They're going to decay in order to get down. This point right here is actually lead 206. So lead 206 is what all of the heavier elements, these guys out here, decay in order to achieve. All elements on the periodic table past lead 206 are by default radioactive. In fact, there's even forms of lead that's radioactive. Lead 208 would have too many neutrons, and so it would want to decay to get to lead 206. All right, and once again, you don't need to write this down. This will be something I'll give you. Uh, and what this shows is your zone of stability right there, and then what the element would undergo in order to get into that zone of stability. So, for example, if we looked at that zirconium again, which would have the 40 and 60, so it's out there. Obviously, it has too many neutrons, so it'd have to undergo a beta decay in order to get into that zone of stability. And if you think about it, this would make sense, because what you're doing is you're turning a neutron into a proton, and so you're going to increase the number of protons, but decrease the number of neutrons, and so you might get a little bit closer. It might not get you all the way to the zone, but then that undergoes its own beta decay, and then eventually you're going to wind up with an element that will fall here inside of the zone of stability. On the other hand, if you have an element that might be right here, it will either undergo an electron capture or a positron decay. Either one of those is going to turn a proton into a neutron, thus moving you over to the left and up a little bit, getting you into the zone of stability. And then everything out here in this range, everything past 83 protons, is going to undergo alpha decay because there's just too much of everything, and so it'll just lose chunks until it can get to that zone of stability. And so if we come back to this first slide, we can take a look at what's going to happen then and write that down. So if an element has too many protons, it's going to undergo either positron decay or an electron capture. 
Either one of those will get rid of a proton, add another neutron. If it has too many neutrons, it's going to want to undergo beta decay, because that turns a neutron into a proton. And if it has too much of everything, it'll undergo alpha decay, because that gets rid of everything.